We have an obnoxious amount of lights now. You know, Ken, the tire budget here has to get a real out of hand. <laughs> Thankfully, Toyota's a great sponsor of ours. It is somewhat happy when I destroy their tires. See, At least I hope so. Please, Toyota, be happy about that. Today we're back. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of tire burning in this thing. It's been smashing stage rallies. It's been doing all sorts of good stuff. But today we're not actually slaying tires. Today's episode's about lights. Like those big rigid lights right there. I know that a lot of people really like rally lights, like cars with giant lights on the front of them. And there's actually the two different sets that we've had on the, the Kazi. There's the old traditional big four lights. And today we have a much more modern and sleek one that, that Rigid has built me. But those lights have a very distinct purpose. And that is so that I can drive flat out down a stage at night and be able to see the corner that's coming up when I'm driving 120 miles an hour uh, through a dark forest. That's it, that, that's really the simplicity of what this episode's all about. So we're gonna actually go out into the desert and drive this truck with just headlights and then with this lighting setup that's here on top to compare them. And then we're gonna add many more lights, too much light. Because there is a level to where it just becomes redundant. You, you can see the corner coming from a mile away if you have too much light, or even, I think, this much light. More science today. Real quick, this thing is now in its second rendition. Yeah. It's got a bunch of radical upgrades. out to SVC during the quarantine and said, hey, now would be a great time to do something more with this truck. What more can we upgrade it? Uh, I've partnered with Wheel Pros, which owns Fuel, and we've come out with my own uh, off-road truck wheels. I don't know if you noticed this, but this is a legit bead lock. This is not a bro lock. So this is functional. We've got 17 by nines wrapped in these uh, Toyo open country, full trophy truck spec 40s. We've got a brand new Borla exhaust on it. These tips, amazing. Why don't you go into the details? <laughs> you know more about yeah, it. it's got a fully built Curry 9 inch with a 10 inch ring gear and an ARB locker. And it's a full floating setup. Uh, super sick, uses all the uh, stock plugs and stuff. Got the triple bypass shocks, they're 18 inches long. You got adjustable hydraulic bump stops. It's also got these sick SVC track bars, Deaver leaf springs. The bumpers on this thing are super sick. SVC does a great job and Ken is apparently a snowmobiler. <laughs> oh. SVC did their full bed cage on it with the two 40 inch tire mounts. And then you come up front, you got coilovers, bypass shocks. You got SVC's full A-arms, upper and lower, all of their steering stuff, skid plates for days. Also, wide body kit. Yo, this thing is huge. <laughs> yeah, <it> is. <laughs> this thing's rad. And dude, the new livery, this is sick. Well, basically what we did is we took the livery right off this car. And you can see the stripes on the side of the car and the checker pattern. And we just made it streetable. So same graphics designed by Troy Lee. So we have the stripe pattern and a very nice checker pattern. And it's all reflective. And of course, the major sponsors for the truck. But let's get to what this episode's really all about. The lights. Let's add these lights on. Hell yeah. And there we go. We have an obnoxious amount of lights now. So let's talk about all this stuff. Oh, by the way, one important point that I didn't talk about earlier about rally lights is that a lot of times you have these four lights on the hood, two are going long ways down the stage, two are flooding out a little bit. But a lot of times too, we'd actually have lights on the lower part of the car, even facing more out. The reason for that is and you're sideways in the corner. So some of those lights actually do flood out so you can see down the stage as you're sideways. Very important. So actually, some of the lights that we have on here are actually aiming out to mimic 
that. So, you know the detail of these lights. Why don't you tell us the details? We've got a bunch of different models from Rigid here, right? These guys, the new ones, these are actually controlled by a GPS module. It adjusts your beam per your speed, right? So the faster you go, it can narrow that beam and intensify it further out so you get a longer uh, line of sight. Right, because typically the faster you're going, you're going straight. But then as you slow down and start turning, that's when it gets wider. Exactly. So these DXL lights that are mounted right here in these pods. So we got the spotlights in the middle and then these are driving on the sides. We've also got these R46 series down here and up top. And so we got three of these Big Daddy E-Series, the 50-inch bars. So here's the question. How much light is too much light? Well, we're gonna find out. I'm ready. Let's do Are it. You done? You done with all the details? I think, I think so. You guys wanna see driving? All right, let's go. All right, we made it out to the desert here. It's time to put these lights to the test. As you can see, we're in the pitch black middle of nowhere. We have to set up lights. Yeah, we have a fun little road that actually ends at the Pony Express Trail. That's right. You have some knowledge about that. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I was just gonna Drop. go into that. Thank you, Ken. Now, <laughs> Pony Express Trail, a 1900 mile trail. It started in St. Joseph, Missouri and went all the way to San Francisco. It became obsolete in 18 months because they invented the telegraph. There you go, you learned something today. <laughs> so let's get in the truck and see what these lights look like. Like we said, regular headlights get you a certain view, which you can see out there. We have some fencing and we have some sort of water tanks ahead of us. I can go down a road pretty quick with that, but from a distance at 150 miles an hour, 120 miles an hour, I'm not going to see this corner soon enough. So that's why we start adding these other lights. So the first light that we're going to add, the rigid adapt models. The so GPS we have, guys. We have two of those. So here's the bumper. And then here's the roof. As you can see already, we have a big improvement. Oh, so yeah. at high speed, we're gonna be able to see a lot better looking down the road, right? Yeah. So one big important thing to think about this is when you're racing at night, it looks much more like a video game, mm -hmm. right? So what we wanna do with all the lights is add all this dimension so that you can get much more of a feel of when the corner is coming up and then how fast you can get through the corner. This is step two, right? Should we throw on the big boys? All right. Good God. <laughs> I mean, that's everything. You can see we have long distance stuff. Everything out in front of us is completely lit up. That is a lot of light. Thank you, Rigid. This rips. I think I do think it's a bit too much light. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll need to test that. So, All right, let's try it. Let's try it out. Here's what we'll do. First run, we're gonna go stock. Second run, Rigid adapts. The last run, and all of the beans, and, and see how that works. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. See, the problem with the regular lights is that I can't see that corner up there. No, and you really cannot see shit. <laughs> That is a, uh, that's pretty wild how sketchy that is. <laughs> Give me your professional take on it. Cause for me, it's just like, I, I can't see anything more than like 50 feet ahead. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. You want to be able to see the turns coming up and see them clearly and know if they're opening and closing. And like, because especially if you're at the apex of the corner, you want to be able to get on the gas cause the corner's opening up and you can go faster. But if you can't see the end of the corner and what you need to be doing, you can't go as fast as you want to go. Three, two, one, go. Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> Good save. I was trying to power through the corner, but it got tighter than I expected. I can tell that you can see better. Twenty fifty eight. Holy, <laughs> For the first part it was kind of dusty. That is one thing about lights like this if there is dust in the air, it's gonna light it all yeah. up, you know. So, but I was able to see the corner so much better and trust what I'm seeing to, to then drive to it. Yeah, I, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, at first, I was like, okay, it's a little less sketchy, but I was like. Nah, it's definitely just getting sketchier because you're going faster. Here we go. This one for all the marbles, Ken. Three, two, one, go. Oh, I can see around the corner so much you Yeah, I know. I, you can see like a <laughs> oh thousand. <my> <laughs> That's amazing. Like we can see all the way in the reflector way up in that corner. That means I can drive faster though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Somebody was not thinking when they put that on the outside of that turn. Well, that made a big difference. That, well, I guess we answered it though. That, that's not too much light. That was amazing. Man, what do you think? <laughs> that was really fun, actually. So yeah, that you know that comparison really was quite impressive. Uh, I think we were 127, 129, then dropped to 120 with. Uh, the two adapt lights, and then with the whole shebang, uh, dropped another four seconds off that. So pretty good on short, you know, it's a short little stage, so. I think what we found today is more light is more better because more <laughs> light equals more speed. I like it. I, how, how do we get that on the rally car? That was, that was, it was good. There we have it, science.